SAP on the generative AI bandwagon with an assistant called Joule. What's happening here, Daniel? It is Joule, right? Yes, like okay. like the unit of uh, energy, Joule. Yeah, no, no, I, I, I uh, but it's like I, with it being a European German company, it's like I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. But uh, they're a global company, so 300 million enterprise users, 300 million enterprise users are are leveraging SAP solutions. Look, we're going to talk a lot about generative AI this week because um, what else is there to talk about? But we've been kind of waiting through this motion of what is every company going to be doing, and and of course. You know, with uh, BTP and, uh, you know, SAP in the cloud, we have no doubt that SAP intends, and it actually has announced partnerships with the likes of, the, of Microsoft and Google and others. It's very much building a ecosystem-friendly approach to enabling generative AI. But when you have that much data, that much capability, and you're that critical to running an enterprise's application, having your own digital assistant Leveraging the power of generative AI is going to be a thing that is going to be required. It's a thing that SAP needs to have embedded into its platform. So what has it done? Well, it's done just that. And this week, I had a wonderful opportunity. I think you have it in the past to sit down with the CEO, Christian Klein, to talk a little bit about the company's strategy. You know, the company's going through a pretty massive transformation right now. AI is kind of putting this company at this inflection where many of its users, and this is something a lot of people might be aware of but don't really know, is SAP's done a really nice job of moving companies to the cloud, but it still has a humongous set of its customers on-prem. And so we're kind of talking Joule, I'm kind of talking cloud migration, and I'm kind of talking AI all at once. But again, this is not a news show, people. So if you're waiting to read the news, you can read the link below. I'm going to give you some analysis here. SAP needs to move its customers to the cloud or it needs to have its customers running its applications in the cloud, and here's why. In order to get the best functionality and features in the generative AI era, companies are going to increasingly make it a priority to develop the continuous improvement of applications to be run in a continuously updatable, manageable sandbox. Well, guess what? Having your highly customized code on-prem is going to be impossible for enterprises to successfully leverage the benefits of AI. And this is a lot to do with what I was talking with, with Christian about. But this is also what Joule is all about. Joule, for a company to get the benefit, whether you're running a finance ERP tool or an HR application, will not be able to be continuously upgraded to give optimum performance and capabilities to its customers if it's asked to be custom coded into every different variant and iteration of, of, of SAP. So right now, I mean, because you're not only talking about SAP's ERP, you're talking about uh, success factors, you're talking about Ariba. We're talking about you know procurement. We're talking about HR. We're talking about ERP. We're talking about you know CRM and, and marketing tools. So this is a transformational moment where we're moving from kind of a conceptual hype to enterprise-wide deployment. And you have so much valuable data sitting inside your SAP instance. We need to get the most out of it. So this is where Jewel being embedded across the SAP ecosystem is gonna be important. And it's also gonna be important for the company to make sure that it wins the battle to this cloud transformation and doesn't attract, let's say third-party companies that are saying we can overlay um, enterprise-wide workflow capabilities that can then be managed using a generative AI tool and you can leave your, 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 your hardware on-prem. It won't work as well, people will try it, but you can be sure that this is where Jewel is gonna end up winning out. Now, of course, you need to be able to see these reports, the flexibilities, the capabilities. It needs to be very natural language. It needs to be easy to use. It needs to be central to the business's performance because here's the one thing every one of these companies in this space, whether it's Salesforce, Microsoft, uh, SAP, need to be thinking about. And Pat, stick with me here. Just one more second. I'm with you, buddy. I'm, I know, but I want you to know I'm feeling it today. Oh. There will be a reckoning in the fact that not every single application in your enterprise can have its own digital assistant, meaning at some point we're going to want the digital assistant of digital assistants. And so we're going to have some competition across the cloud, SaaS, ERP, um, productivity, collaboration. Where do we actually engage Gen AI? Who's going to be the leader? And then who are going to be the secondary robots that are going to play fetch? like the Poochies we started talking about, that are gonna get all that data and bring it back to us in one centralized environment. So Pat, I think it's a good move. It's on the right track. This cloud migration is very important. I think SAP is doing what it has to do, but it has to migrate its customers. It has to win that front line of being the source of truth and generative truth 
And that's what I think SAP is setting out to do. Yeah, so this generative AI launch from SAP really closes the circle of enterprise generative AI, right? You saw the IaaS folks uh, come out and then, uh, which, you know, if you want to do your own applications uh, around that, uh, you can. Uh, but then, and then we saw the front end of the office with folks like uh, Salesforce. And now we've got the back end uh, of the office, the uh, HCM, HRM, SCM, ERP, and, and CX uh, uh, kind of coming uh, full circle here. And it, it is interesting, Daniel, uh, to your point, if the need for a uniform or a unified, like, like one generative AI bot, right? There's two ways to get there. The first way you can get there is to go all in on an end-to-end, -end, you know, a NetSuite or an Oracle Fusion. Uh, the other way, obviously, is through APIs and custom uh, data integration, where you can train uh, a lot of these bots if they have the data uh, to, to, to to have that come back. I, I believe, all like, We've always fantasized about a single pane of glass uh, to manage IT, but there's never in the history of, of glass that there's been a single pane of glass. It's really about reducing those panes of glass. So I do think the reality is we are gonna have multiple chatbots out there uh, for uh, certain, and, and like we've seen in IaaS, you have your primary and then you have your secondary uh, stuff. Uh, to your comment uh, about the cloud, I 100% uh, agree with you. SAP customers need to get there. And I think SAP has been one of the most patient companies uh, when it comes to uh, old style uh, IT and supporting that. I think Christian said he's going to let no, you know, no customer behind, uh, which I admire. Uh, I also know the reality of, of product development. And this harkens back to Windows probably a decade ago when Microsoft was spending over 50% of its R&D uh, on stuff like drivers, right, for old hardware. Yeah. And Apple, right, was pretty much abandoning customers left and right on the Mac platform to get to, you know, I'll call it common core, okay? SAP has a common core too. And uh, even if it's common core, doesn't mean it's one way of of doing I you know IT right. There's three to four different flavors of SAP common core that a lot of its customers can. SAP needs to very quickly uh, move off of customers who, quite frankly, are holding the rest of the pack. Uh, behind. We saw this with Oracle and Oracle's on-prem uh, apps like uh, Oracle app, like Pe was it PeopleSoft was one of the big ones. Um, and Oracle had to do a sharp, you know, a sharp right turn. And they acknowledged that they needed to get people onto a common core. At, they Did they anger some customers? Absolutely. And I think SAP is going to have to bite the bullet and move this forward for not only, it's not just about SAP, but it's about all of the rest of SAP customers that have moved the cloud. I do also acknowledge there were some first movers uh, who moved uh, via VMs. Um, and, you know, these aren't laggards. These are big companies uh, who move stuff uh, into, into IaaS that will need to figure out, you know, because they're not on Common Core, how to take advantage of this. But uh, these are very sophisticated companies. Uh, they'll grumble a little, but uh, they'll uh, move forward. Now, we're going to hear more about that um, in October. SAP has uh, multiple events. They've got Connect Live, and they have uh, Experience Live, and they have Tech Ed all throughout October and November. But it's great to see in what I will call mission-critical applications, where the risk is very high that SAP is moving uh, into this generative AI uh, future. This isn't their first launch, right? They did some announcements uh, about their uh, ecosystem, you know, Western Europe's uh, Aleph Alpha, Anthropic, Cohere, and a lot of third-party partnerships with uh, Microsoft, Google Cloud, uh, and IBM. So this isn't their first uh, generative AI or AI announcement, but I think it is a, it is a big one.